Today on Perpetual Projects, we are going to install a Transgo shift reprogramming kit in a 727 transmission. Some of the reasons you might want to put a shift kit in are firmer, crisper shifts, both for normal street driving, like if you have a somewhat performance oriented car, or for towing or any heavy duty use. Also, if you're drag racing, quicker shifts means quicker times. Also, installing a shift kit can help a transmission last longer because it has less slippage when it's shifting and the, it's more of a firm, crisp shift and you don't get as much wear when the transmission is shifting from gear to gear. This kit is for transmissions where you want to retain the automatic shifting feature where you can just put it in part and drive and let it shift through the gears on its own. If you're looking for a full manual, either forward or reverse valve body, you want to probably just find a transmission valve body that will give you that function instead of putting a kit in your factory valve body. Now here's the disclaimer. It says right on the front page of these instructions, this is not a do-it-yourself kit. It is for experienced professional trans mechanics only. I'm a DIY guy. I'm gonna do it. I've done it before. So do this at your own risk, but it's really not that complicated. So this kit is actually like two kits in one. You can have rip roaring, coffee spilling, tire blazing, brutal shifts, or short firm shifts with performance, durability, and class. Are we going for the first one? Uh, not for this transmission. That first kit is the one that we have in extra parts, our drag truck. But this one, we're just going for firmer shifts. This is going in a kind of a cream puff cruiser truck that just wants a little, he wants a little firmer shifts and he doesn't want to roast the tires every time it shifts into second gear. You can also use this to get shift command feature, which basically means if you put it in second gear, it's in second gear. If you put it in first gear, it's in first gear. But if you put it in drive, it will go through the gears the way it's supposed to. Page one of the destructions is valve body removed and dismantled. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to do this, and I kind of set this up assuming that you still have your transmission in your vehicle because you can do it that way. If it's out, it's easier, and it'll be way easier for us to film, but you can do this in the, in the vehicle. First thing you have to do is pull the pan off. Be careful. If this is in your car, there's probably fluid behind here. Once you get the pan removed, you're going to have to pull your filter off and it just has these, these three screws and then throw your filter away. The first thing you're going to have to take off in order to get the valve body out is your shift lever and your kick down lever or your throttle valve lever that are, is going to be right here. Remove the 10 7 16 headed quarter inch bolts that hold the valve body on. There's three here, three here and four there. Once your 10 bolts that hold this down are out, be careful, they'll be fluid and there's also usually a spring behind the accumulator. And you just pull it out and slide the park lever out of the park paw. Now if your transmission wasn't in park, there's a chance that this will get stuck in there. If that happens, just rotate the drive shaft till it lines up and it'll come right out. This is the spring that, will, that is behind the valve body. It goes right there. So the next thing we have to do is separate the two halves of the valve body and in order to get them apart you're going to take this screw on the top side here out and then this screw here on the side out and then there's one last screw and careful there's springs behind here so don't lose them. Yeah, it might have been better to take this one out last. This spring goes here, and that spring goes there. Those get replaced when we put this back together. Then to separate, you just gotta take the rest of these screws out. Once you get all the screws out, the separator plate is gonna hold any check balls that are in here, which there is one in there, or a few in there inside there so set that to the side and then you have all of these check balls in there and there's different sizes so make sure you take a picture and know where they all go i think most of them are outlined in the kit but if you have a picture you'll know where they go 
So the location of all of these check balls, and there's two different sizes, is located right here in the instructions. So you'll know where to put them back. Now once you have the valve body separated, you can get to the separator plate. I'm just gonna take all these screws, and there's a stiffener here. And there's also check balls underneath here. So when you take this off, and this one has a spring as well. Make sure you, you have it facing down so that you don't lose any check balls. There's one there. And then like I said, there's this bypass valve. That's the bypass valve. So if you have that, you need to reinstall it. So the first step is to modify our separator plate. We have the option of passenger car, towing, truck, motorhome, or hot rod, off-road, street strip, and full race. We're gonna go with the passenger car, towing, truck, and motorhome. And the first what hole we have to modify is hole A. As you can see right here, it's this hole here. And if it's a triangle, it says, do not drill. Okay. Ours isn't a triangle, so we're not gonna drill, we're gonna drill it. And the kit comes with both an 86 and 110 thousandths drill bit. So 110 thousandths is on the small side, so we're gonna drill that on the small side. And then you want to make sure that the hole's nice and clean and not no burrs. And as you, I can feel a burr here. And so what I'm going to do for that, if you have a chamfer tool, you can use that. If not, I'm just going to use a bigger drill bit by hand and just take the burr off. And flip it over and do the other side. The next hole that we have to modify is hole B, which is this little one right here. And 86 to 125 thousandths bigger is firmer. Again, we'll just take a bigger drill bit, just the next size bigger drill bit, and chamfer that hole on both sides so it doesn't have a burr. Next is hole C, which is this one right here, and that one is already over 120, 110 thousandths anyway, so we're gonna leave it alone. The last hole we might have to modify is hole D, 110 to 140 thousandths, and that is right here, which is right here on our valve body, and it says if it's already bigger, it's okay. We're gonna go with 110 and it's already bigger than that one. So we're just gonna leave it alone. So on the instructions, there is a note that if you have a whole L that you have to have a 3 8 check ball and a spring or a poppet valve. And that hole would be located right here. Since we don't have it, we don't need to worry about that. Step two is for your race. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call it street and race your race shift kit and that would be this hole here if you don't have the two little hole or the second little hole there you're supposed to drill that out to 3 16 since this is gonna be a street shift kit we're gonna leave that hole alone so step three is remember this check valve and spring that came out of this hole right here we need to take this spring and change it to the green spring that comes in our package and you can see it's got some green on it right there and install it right there. Step four is for 60 to 65 uh, push button transmissions, so we'll skip that step. The first step for the top part of the valve body is to remove the rooster comb, and there's an E-clip right here that you have to pull off. And just be careful because there's a check ball in here and it is under pressure, so be ready to catch that ball. Also the E-clip. There's a seal in here that <clears throat> you'll probably want to replace. This keeps fluid from leaking out where the throttle valve goes or the throttle valve shaft goes through the rooster comb. Keep this separate. I don't know if it's the same size as any of the other check balls, so I'm just going to leave it stuck to my magnet. 
The kit comes with a mummy stake to hold that check ball in there for reinstallation. If you want to, you can go ahead and put it in there now. I'm going to wait till we're ready to put this back together. Now, you turn the valve body over and you remove the old manual valve. And you're not going to reuse that. Then we have to get a file and file halfway through the thickness of this in a straight line right there. It says in the directions not to worry, this isn't fussy. So. Notch filed. Hmm? That was kind of a pain in the butt. I lost my hat somewhere. Um, it says it's not fussy, so I just, what I, I got it started by kind of turning this on edge and getting it so it would stay in the groove and then just kind of slowly, slowly went till it was straight and cut it all the way across. And then I cleaned it up with a little tiny ignition file. So now the next step is to put the rooster comb back together. And this is where we use our mummy peg that comes in the package with the new manual valve. And after you chase this ball six or eight times, you should be able to get it in there. Oh, that wasn't as bad. Well, I, I said that. I shouldn't have said that till after I had it completely installed. Stay. Launch. And then we're also putting a kit in this transmission. So we have a new seal for our throttle valve. Um, if you're not replacing it, then don't worry about it. Now you just put the rooster comb back in there and it'll knock that. Then you can take that mummy peg out. It'll actually knock it down as you put it together. Let me get set up and I'll show you. Now make sure you clean any filings out of there and install your new manual valve. And your rooster comb. Your th TV. Uh, I don't know, it's the lever that presses on the throttle valve. The washer. And the little E-clip. Okay, now that's all put. When you do that, you should probably make sure you line this up in the manual valve, because that's not where it goes. So now we'll take it back apart and try again. That looks better. It's all back together now. Ball's still in there. Make sure you get the mummy peg out of there. <laughs> now we're going to shift our transmission all the way into park, which is the manual valve all the way in. Flip this over and the tapered portion of the manual valve should be within 30 thousandths of flat on that surface right there that you can see. Um, ours looks pretty close. To adjust that, you just bend this little lever here until it's all the way where it needs to be. On to the next page of our instructions. Step one is for lockup trains and we don't have that. Step two says if your valve body has a passage here plug it ours doesn't so we don't have to worry about it step three says that if your valve body has a partition here to remove it or drill an eighth inch hole in it we don't have it so we're not worried about it step four is to use the drill plate and the 3 16 drill bit that comes with it to drill another hole so we'll do that now so this little plate that is provided with the kit has a little up on it and if it's on there right you should see that divider wall through the hole that you're going to drill through you put the spring on to stop your drill bit so that you have 7 16 of drill bit exposed and then drill out that hole. Okay. 
And if I'm not mistaken, when you take this back off, we'll see that we just drilled that right to the bottom of that passage. Let me blow this out with some air. It's not exactly to the bottom, but that's what the, where we removed that divider wall. The next step deals with the line bypass ball and spring, which goes here. This is a 77 valve body, so it does not have that spring. The 68 to 76 is the only ones that have that spring and you would drill a hole through the side. Ours doesn't have it, so we're not gonna mess with it. Next, we have to modify the throttle valve, which is all the way down here. So we have to take all this out. There's a spring. If you just work through the holes, you can move it out a little bit at a time. Well, I promise this comes out. Who would have thought this would be the hardest part of this kit? I think filing that notch was the hardest part of this kit so far. Four hours later, it's out of there. Now we have to dr grind the stem here down to 930 seconds of an inch. Uh, we're gonna just do it on a bench grinder a little bit at a time. So this is the spring that we removed and you have to find the spring in the kit, either yellow or pink, that matches the diameter of the spring that you took out and install it after you modify your throttle valve. Then it all goes back into the same hole And then there's a sleeve on this part here. The bigger diameter hole goes towards the inside. You'll know if you got it wrong, it won't go on all the way. It needs to go all the way in there and fit down in there just like that. Okay, now it's to put, time to put all of our check balls back where they go. That one is a 77 and up only check ball. Things are hard to hold on to. I got all of them at once. <coughs> one goes there, one goes there, <coughs> one goes there. Now, for the firmest shifts, it says not to install that, but we don't want the firmest shifts. We want towing, so we're going to put that in. So now that we've got the separator plate all reinstalled on the lower half of the valve body, don't forget if you don't want the race kit to put the check ball in there. And we're gonna flip this over and it goes back onto the valve body the way we removed it. And you have to put all these longer screws in there. Once you get all your screws back in, except for the one that goes in the retainer for your springs and the three that go in your filter, <clears throat> it's time to put your pressure spring and your torque converter spring on. You're going to reuse the original torque converter spring. We'll put that on in a minute. And then in the package, you get four parts. You get a shim, a shim that goes on first, then a spring seat, and it's got a flat cut so it'll fit in there right next to that like that. And then you have an inner and an outer spring. You put the inner spring inside the outer spring. Then you put your two springs on there and you get your spring retainer and you need to back this adjuster off until this plate is flat with the edge there. and it's righty tighty to pull that plate up. Flat against that. Then 
The spring for the converter valve goes on there. That goes over there. And then when we took this apart, I did it. I didn't like the way that I did it. And I'm gonna try to do it a different way now. And the way that is, is I'm gonna put this little screw in here to hold that those springs compressed. Like that. And then your long screw goes on the bottom. I'm just snugging these until I get them all in there. And then your other short screw goes on the top. That hole's not lined up, so I'm just gonna set the screw in here and get ready to start it. And then... Go back and make sure they're all tight. That's the end of page five. Page six is an optional shift command feature and we're not gonna do that to this transmission. Now we're on to the last page, which has to do with the main body of the transmission. The last step has to do with the low reverse piston, and the first thing you have to do is get it out of there. In order to get it out of there, you're gonna to have to remove the band strut that is back here. Just back this off until that's completely flat. And then if you reach down in here, you can grab the band and compress it while you hold that, and the band strut will come out. And if you're doing this in the car, Remember, this is going to be down, so it's going to fall out of there. Then you should be able to flip that back out of the way. And this is under spring pressure, but not a ton, so just hold it down. Work the clip out of there. Pull the piston out. Amber, this is the new hardest part of this. We have to get this spacer in there. We're gonna try to do this with a press, without a press. We're gonna try to do this without a press. We're gonna use the vise. It comes with a new snap ring. We're just gonna put this in the vise and catch the edge. Just like that. You need your glasses. I need smaller snap ring pliers. Smaller snap ring pliers, maybe. Amber turned it on before I had a chance to check, so I guess you guys are gonna find out with me. And you thought compressing it was going to be the hardest part. I didn't say that. I said that this was going to be the hardest part. I didn't specify which part of doing it was going to be the hardest part. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> did you think the snap ring was going to be a problem? No, I didn't think the snap ring was going to be the problem. 47 minutes later, we got the snap ring off. We're just going to finish tapping the servo. What do they call this thing? The servo shaft out. Install the spacer. Put it back in. Clamp it in the vise. And it actually bottoms all the way out. So use our new snap ring that our snap ring pliers fit in much better. Make sure it's fully seated. Take the pressure off. Then there's another thing, it's an additional note on one of the other sheets to grind this bottom lip of the piston down. So we're gonna do that. And you just take this down about halfway and it helps reduce or prevent caulking of this in the bore. Now that we have that all ground down, we're gonna go ahead and re-lube our 
the seal, lip seal. <clears throat> Put that back in and then you're gonna install, the kit comes with two plain springs. This one and this one, we're gonna install the longer of the plain springs with the original retainer plate. And now it has a lot more spring pressure. So a tip is to press that down and you can get that caught in the snap ring groove and get your snap ring ready so that you can get it started. Well, that didn't work. It might take a few tries. That was a lot easier before we put that stiff spring in there. Hey Joe, so you hold this down. Not far enough. Not quite far enough. Are you caught in the groove? You are. Here, you hold it down. I'll put the clip in. <laughs> Okay, and then you'll want to just make sure that that clip is bottomed out all the way around. Put that back over and prepare for a fight. This might be the hardest part about putting this kit in, especially if you're trying to do it in the car. So slide that down and it'll get caught in that band. Tom, if I got a valve spring tool, it works better. And then, again, in the car, this is going to be the hard part. So if you take a flat screwdriver and put it on there sideways, you should be able to get it up in there. And now it's installed and you'll know because it moves the van, band. <clears throat> now we have to readjust the bands. And the instructions tell you to tighten this with a short wrench, snug. If you have a single wrap band, which this one is, you'll know if you have a double wrap band because it'll have a band piece and it'll have a center piece. It's actually three pieces. If you have a single wrap band, two and a half turns off back, backed off from snug. Double wrap band, three and a half turns backed off from snug. And then your front band adjustments over here, you'll go two turns backed off from snug and then tighten the jam nuts. All I have is a long range, so I'm just gonna choke up and pretend it's really short. That feels snug to me. Two and a half turns. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters, seven quarters, eight quarters, nine quarters, ten quarters. I can't get a boxed in wrench on that nut to jam it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a marker and color nothing with that marker. We'll use red. I'm gonna color this flat so that after I jam it, if that flat isn't still facing up, I know that I moved my adjustment and I need to try again. It moved. So what we'll do is we'll preset this back just a tiny bit so that as it turns, it tightens straight up and down where we want it. The last step in the directions is to install this orifice plug in this hole here. Ours already has one, so we'll discard that step, but you just use a 5 16 bolt, press it in there. If you had a spring in your accumulator, don't forget to put it back. And then to reinstall your valve body, I gotta put this in out of park to get it to go in there. So like that. And 
turn that until that lever will go And it goes all the way through. <clears throat> then you just put your 10 valve body bolts back in. There was a special note instruction in there that if you're using this on a rear pump transmission to cut this hole out of the screen, but they must have changed the design because it's already cut on this one. So the last thing you have to do before you reinstall your pan is to put your filter on there. And this is the pickup hole and these are the three holes for the, the three screws for the filter, you can only put this in one way. So, the stock ones don't have a gasket, but this one has one. I'm thinking that might be to help it clear the screws. It came with it, I'm gonna use it. If your original one didn't have it, don't worry. I've The, the stock filters don't have a gasket that I've seen. All right. The last step is to install your pan, but ours is not painted yet, and we need to paint it before we put it on our pretty rebuilt transmission. If you like this type of stuff, subscribe. We do different stuff like this all the time. If you uh, mostly work on Chryslers, um, that's pretty much all I own. But if you want to see us try something else, leave a comment below. Maybe we'll see if we can give it a shot. See you soon.